Okay, so let's get to our review of chapter five and six. So we're reviewing what's in chapter five and six, basically we're reviewing what's going to be tested on the exam. Let's get this uh, started here. Okay, First off, let's remind ourselves what we've covered. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, first off, we start off with uh, the chapter on electron configurations. The first part was basically light as a tool, and we learned different properties about light. We learned about energy, uh, light having energy, wavelength, and frequency. Oops, too far on that one. Um, so energy, wavelength, and frequency. And remember, we're not really, we weren't really studying light to study light. We're studying light as a tool to uh, get us to kind of understand uh, what's going on inside the atom. So uh, that's where we started first. So we learned uh, different properties of energy, frequency, and wavelength. Uh, real quick reminder over here. There's a whole PowerPoint on light as a wave and some wave properties. Put this over here so I can go ahead and start that here. Um, let's see. So uh, we talked about waves and uh, parts of a wave, including wavelength. A wavelength is frequency, how many waves passing uh, a given point per second, and um, how they relate to the speed of a wave. So we learned this equation over here. Speed is equal to frequency. This is a Greek letter nu, frequency times wavelength. And you guys had a worksheet on that. Okay, we did some practice problems. Uh, then we turned to the electromagnetic spectrum because everything in the electromagnetic spectrum behaves like a wave. Okay, so we talked about what was waving the electromag electromagnetic spectrum, which is basically electric fields and magnetic fields. Um, and then we talked about the different kinds of uh, waves in the electromagnetic uh, spectrum um, that included gamma rays, x-rays, UV light, visible light, infrared radiation, microwaves, radar waves, and radio waves. The only difference between all these is their frequency and thus their energy. And of course, the wavelength is related to frequency. Um, so um, we talked about what they had in common and what they differed in. And really, they only differed in their wavelength, frequency, and energy. All these three are related to each other. There's equations that we're going <clears> to <throat> see. And they're all made up of the same stuff. They all travel at the same speed. And they can travel in space without a medium. Okay. So uh, once again, it's a spectrum. It's not like there's a certain number of gamma rays and x-rays and ultraviolet light and uh, infrared and vi uh, microwaves and radio waves. There is a, a gamut between them. Okay? They actually range in um, you know, frequency and wavelength. Uh, between a maximum and a minimum for each category. We've basically taken the spectrum and kind of cut them up into different parts of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, visible light is a really small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it can be broken up into these colors. Uh, we remember them using the letters uh, Roy G. Biv, or the word Roy G. Biv it's a, as an acronym. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, those are... All, they all differ only based on their wavelengths. Right? And once again, wavelengths and different wavelengths give different frequencies and different amounts of energy. So right here, they are put from highest energy to lowest energy, and from smallest wavelength to largest wavelength. The whole chart here is from smallest wavelength to, to high wavelengths. Um, and so uh, we talked about Visible light specifically because a lot of times our first clues uh, were from visible light. You know, what was going on inside the atom it was based on uh, the light that was coming out of it. Didn't realize that there was also infrared light and ultraviolet light coming from the spectra of these different elements. Uh, once again, Roy G. Biv are the colors of, this, of the visible light spectrum. Not only do they help you remember the colors, but they help you remember them in order from largest wavelength down to smallest wavelength, right? Or lowest frequency to highest frequency, okay? And remember that white light is produced when all the colors are combined. That's how we get the white light. They have all the colors in there. Um, <clears throat> we talked about all the forms of electromagnetic radiation moving at the same speed, three times in the eighth meters per second. And we use the C as a, uh, as a constant. And we came up with a couple of equations for electromagnetic radiation. Uh, energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency, or here's Planck's constant. I will 
give that to you on a test. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to know how to use it. Plug it into the equation here when necessary. Um, well, it's always necessary. And also our second equation, instead of S is equal to frequency times wavelength, it's C is equal to frequency times wavelength. Because C, the speed of light, is the speed of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, And you will also be given the speed of light. Okay, So those were a few things that we learned about um, light. Uh, we did some calculations. You should be able to do these calculations uh, on um, the test. <clears throat> so once again, here's their equations uh, that we are using. Uh, speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. Your speed of light is given. Um, that's why there's an asterisk over it. And energy is equal to H times frequency. Both these equations have frequency in them. So if you find the frequency in one, you can solve a frequency in one equation, then you can plug it into the other in order to do your calculations. Once again, you'll also be given the um, Planck's constant, right? So you should be able to do these type of problems. We had two worksheets uh, that had us practicing that, okay? Um, so here's some sample problems. Let's see, where did it go? So here we did one in class. We had a wavelength of 560 nanometers. How much energy did it have? Well, the equations have wavelength relating to frequency and then frequency relating to energy, right? If you look at the equations. So um, whenever you use wavelength in, a, uh, in the frequency times wavelength equation, you have to have the wavelength in meters. It's common to have nanometers. So we need to convert the nanometers to meters. So remember, in order to convert nanometers to meters, a nanometer is a billion, a billionth of a meter, or we can say a billion nanometers is one meter. So you convert the 560 nanometers, divide by one times 10 to the ninth, you're going to get the meters. And so 560 nanometers, 5.6 times 10 minus 7 uh, meters. Once we have the wavelength in meters, we can go ahead and plug it into our equation here. Speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. We know what C is, always the same. Plug in the uh, wavelength and you solve for frequency. Here I moved the letters around first, then plugged in the numbers. You can put in the numbers first and uh, solve for the uh, remaining uh, variable frequency if you'd like. Okay. Um, but this is, I think, cleaner. So we got a frequency from there. Once you get the frequency, you plug it into E times H. E is equal to H times frequency equation, this equation. Take your frequency, plug it in here. That's going to go ahead and give you your energy. Remember that H is also given. So these numbers in blue are always the same. And that'll give you your energy. Okay. So uh, from a wavelength in nanometers, we were able to calculate <clears throat> the, the amount of energy that a photon of that type of light has. Okay, so you should be able to do problems like that. Okay, so those are the type of problems that you're going to see um, having to do with light. Okay, we also talked about the Bohr model of the atom. And uh, actually, the reason why we learned these equations right here is so that we can go ahead and find out what's going on inside the Bohr model of the atom. And um, we got this uh, Bohr model of the atom from the atomic spectra that are given off by light. So you'll recall that we talked about every element having a spectrum of colors that it gives off when the um, element is excited, right? We, we did it by shocking gas in a discharge tube or putting um, a sample of a metal into a flame and we got a color out of it. And that color can be broken up into all these different specific wavelengths which come at different colors. So um, to... Uh, to explain the hydrogen spectrum, um, Niels Bohr basically said, oh, each of those wavelengths comes from a transition of an electron from a higher energy level down to a lower energy level. Right? And so um, we get different colors based on the energy difference between these energy levels. He came up with an equation over down here, right? the energy of an electron and the nth energy level is equal to the negative Rydberg constant. This is the Rydberg constant down here at the bottom, 
times one over n squared. So RH is this number right here. And this equation is really easy to use. You just plug in the energy level, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Uh, plug it into here and then uh, square it. Then take this number and divide by whatever n squared ended up being. And you can calculate how much energy an electron has when it's in one of these specific energy levels. Do it to two of them and you can get the difference, right? So we saw here that um, we can use this equation to get a calculation. When an electron falls from the second energy level to the first energy level, it gives off a photon of light. Um, and that photon of light has a specific wavelength that comes from the energy difference between these two energy levels. So if I were to go ahead and use that, um, that uh, Rydberg, I mean, so that Bohr equation here to calculate when the electron is in the first energy level and when it's in the second energy level. So all I do is use this equation, plug a one in here, then use this equation again, plug a two in here. I'm going to end up getting these numbers. I take this number minus that number. That gives me a difference. And that's how much energy this wavelength of light has. So whatever the difference in energy is between these two energy levels, that's how much energy this light, uh, the light has here. Once we know the energy, we can calculate the frequency using E is equal to H times frequency. And then once we have the frequency, we can calculate the wavelength using C is equal to frequency times wavelength. Right? So uh, we've done a whole bunch of problems, a uh, whole worksheet uh, based on those. Let's go ahead and take a look at a sample one. And as I mentioned, these are going to be the hardest uh, problems, I guess, that uh, we're going to have mathematically in this test, <clears throat> at least in my opinion. Um, right, so this is that equation, the Bohr equation in conjunction with the other equations, E is equal to H times frequency, and then um, frequent, uh, C is equal to frequency times wavelength. Okay, so um, if you want to do a problem where uh, we did one, this one in class, the electron falls from the fifth to the second energy level, really. Um, what we did is plug in five into the equa this equation, this equation, plug the number five here, and I got this answer right here. This number times one over five squared gives you this answer. Then I did the same thing with uh, the, using this same equation where I plugged in a two in here. All right, so here is the two. And if I take this number divided by two squared, this would be four, I get this number. Okay. So this is the energy when it's in the fifth energy level. This is the energy when the same electron is fallen to the second energy level. Now I take the difference between those two. All right, I took this number here, subtracted this number here, and I got this. This is the difference in energy between the two. And the difference in energy between those two the difference in energy between those two is how much energy this wavelength of light has. Once that we know the uh, wavelength energy of the wavelength of light, we can go ahead and calculate its frequency using our E is equal to H times frequency equation. And then once we have our frequency, we can plug it into our, uh, our C is equal to frequency times wavelength equation. Solving for wavelength, we get C divided by frequency. That gave us our wavelength. Okay. And once we have the wavelength, we can turn that into nanometers by multiplying by, um, by uh, 1 billion, 1 billion nanometers per meter. Okay, so um, we've done all these things already on a uh, wor worksheet. Okay, so um, that's what we find on this page right here. So you should know about the energy levels. You should know about the equation to calculate the energy of the electron in the different levels. And we should know that that's where the atomic spectra comes from. Okay. Um, any questions on anything at this point? All right, let's move on. Then, um, then after that, we started talking about orbitals because what happened was, turns out that all these calculations, all this idea of energy levels was too oversimplified. It turns out it's a little more complex than that. Then we went on to go ahead and learn about the different types of orbitals. 
there's not just energy levels, but there are energy sublevels also. Oh, wait, that's not the right one. Let me go ahead and get the right one here. So, yeah, it turns out that um, Bohr's model was oversimplified. It turns out that not only do we have energy levels, but we also have sublevels. You should know about the sublevels, which are S, P, D, and F sublevels. And see, we worked up toward that. That S orbitals look like this. You should be able to identify an S orbital on the test. Um, and that every energy level has an S orbital. Higher energy levels, S orbitals are bigger. That just means the electron can go further away from the nucleus. Remember that orbitals are areas where an electron can be found about the nucleus. Uh, there are P orbitals in the second sublevel. Um, then there are D orbitals in the third sublevel. And there are F orbitals in the fourth sublevel. Um, and it turns out that whenever you have um, an orbital uh, and a, a, a orbital sublevel, whenever there's an S sublevel, there's only one S orbital in there. Whenever there's a P sublevel, there's three P orbitals. Whenever there's a D sublevel, there's five D orbitals. Whenever there are F, there's an F sublevel, there are seven F orbitals. Okay. And um, they basically kind of be, can be rearranged like this. Each one of these uh, circles represents an orbit. Okay. So we learned about that. Once we knew about the sublevels and the, and the orbitals, then we could go ahead and start putting electrons in them. And that's where our electron configurations came in. Uh, you should understand that there's two ways of showing electron configurations. Number one, what we really call, what most people call electron configurations are the sublevel notation, the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Uh, you should be able to put those together. We've done that already. Um, and then, um, there's also the uh, orbital diagrams that look kind of like this that show where the electrons are going. Um, this takes a little more space, so we tend to kind of not do it as much. Um, let's see. So we did electron configurations that look like this. Here we have bromine, uh, and it's electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. That is our... Um, unabbreviated electron configuration, what some might call your general uh, electron configuration. Um, but we also can use the, we also can write an abbreviated electron configuration where we can use the, um, the noble gas that's previous to the element as it's what we call kernel. Here's the word kernel up here. Um, we basically just kind of take all this. And since this is the electron configuration for argon, argon is the previous um, noble gas to bromine. Um, we just go ahead and substitute AR, it's, it's symbol, in brackets. And this here represents all this already. So we don't have to write the whole thing out. And all we do is kind of add what comes beyond argon. So 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. Um, we also did lead, uh, and lead's much longer. But you'll notice that they all fill in the same order. First the 1s, then the 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then the 4s, then 3d, then 4p, etc., and so on. Um, we 